Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've been working through this problem on Sherry shuttles. We've just prepared their balance sheet, their statement of financial position. And yes, at the end of the day, the birds were singing, the sun was shining. We managed to balance our balance sheet, our statement of financial position. Now, uh, we've got one more task. Moving up to the question, we've done part A, we've done part B, we've now done part C. We've got to do part D, which is compute some ratios. So the three ratios they've asked for, the current ratio, the debt ratio, and the equity ratio, let's take a look at each of those. The formula for the current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. So CA divided by CL. The formula for the debt ratio is total liabilities divided by total assets. And the formula for the equity ratio is the total shareholders equity divided by, again, total assets. So let's take a look at our current ratio then. Current assets, 6,500. Current liabilities, 3,800. So quickly crunching those numbers, let's call up my calculator here. 6,500 divided by 3,800. I get a ratio of 1.71. So the rule of thumb with current ratios is for small businesses like Sherry's, uh, bigger is safer, definitely, and the rule of thumb is anything above 1.5 and you are safe, but bigger is safer here. Not necessarily better, but safer, and generally if you're answering a question and the current ratio is getting bigger, uh, that's taken as a good sign in most uh, questions. In reality, that's a little bit more gray, I would say. Uh, looking at total liabilities divided by total assets, our debt ratio, total liabilities were 48.8, just over here, total assets were 136.5, 48.8 divided by 136.5. So computing, oops, and I get 0 0.3575. And that's 35.75%. Okay, so what does this mean? This is the percentage of our assets that are owned by debt holders. So I mentioned my house. It's a $250,000 or $300,000 house with a $250,000 mortgage. That means the liabilities are 250. The house is worth 300. 250. Let's see, I can't do the math in my head. Uh, 250 divided by 300. That means in my house, that was actually 83% owned by the bank, right? The, the mortgage holder owns 83% of my house. I own uh, the other 17% of my house. Well, this company owns uh, the, the debt holders own 35% of the company. Uh, the shareholders own the rest. Well, who would you rather be? Would you rather be me, where the debt holders own 83% of our assets, or them, where the debt holders own 35%? Well, probably this one is preferred. So lower, again, not necessarily better, but lower is certainly safer, and by many accounts, preferred. Uh, again, if the ratio is a little bit bigger, that's a little bit riskier. Okay, well, scratch that out because it's got nothing to do with this question. It's all to do with my house. You might wonder where those numbers came from. Um, last one, total shareholders equity, 87.7. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to solve this. The answer here is going to be 64.25%. The reason I know that is these two ratios have to add up to 100%. So I just did in my head. I said, okay, 35 uh, 0.75 plus 64.25 equals 100%. So I didn't even have to do the calculation, but I can just to prove it. Total shareholders equity is 87,700 
divided by 136, 500, and we do indeed get, well, let me do it in the calculator to prove it. Uh, let's see, uh, 87.7 divided by 136 point, ah, 136.5 is 0.64249, yep, 64.25%. Okay, so we've computed our equity ratio. Here, bigger is safer. With the debt ratio, bigger is uh, riskier. With the equity ratio, bigger is safer. And again, debt ratio plus equity ratio has to equal to 100%. I didn't really talk too much about my current ratio. That is probably a key ratio. And if you just think about the components, right, current assets and current liabilities, basically we're saying, do we have enough short-term stuff to pay off our short-term debts? Because if you can't pay your debts, you're dead, you're bankrupt. So people that are interested in analyzing a company, of course, are interested. Do they have enough short-term assets to pay off their short-term liabilities? If not, it's a sign that the company might be in trouble. It's a liquidity ratio. It's saying, do we have enough liquidity? Do we have enough short-term assets, liquid assets, to pay our short-term debts? Okay, final comment on the overall financial statements. At the beginning, I said, oh, income statement for the year ended balance sheet or statement of changes in equity for the year ended and statement of financial state uh, position just gets dated as at or just as a specific date. Why? Well, the reason is if we look at the income statement and think about what it's telling us, it's telling us, did this company make any money during the year and how much money did they make during the year? So if I ask you, or if you ask me, how much money did you make? You can't just ask me how much money did you make. You have to give me a time period. How much money did I make last week? That's going to be different than if you ask me how much money did I make last month. That'll be different from the answer if you ask me how much money did you make last year. So when we're displaying our, our financial statements, we have to say, okay, how much money did we make for the year? Because again, if I compare Apple's financial statements for the year to Google's for the month, I'm comparing apples and oranges, right? I'm not comparing two things that are comparable. So we have to tell our shareholders, this is for a year, or this is for a quarter, quarter being three months, or this is for a month. How long a period are these financial statements for? So for an income statement, it's important to say, oh, it's for a year. Because again, how much money you made for a year will be very different from how much money you made for a month. Now let's look at the stuff on a balance sheet. The balance sheet just gets dated. If I say, how much cash did you have for the year December, ended December 31st, so for the last year, well, your cash on January 1st was this number, January 2nd was this number, January 3rd went down, January 4th went up, you know, your cash goes up and down and up and down. It doesn't make sense to say how much cash you had for the year. It makes sense to say, how much money do you have on this specific date, at this moment in time, how much cash did you have? That's what a balance sheet is saying. They call a balance sheet a snapshot, but I, I just think, okay, well, how much stuff did I have at this specific moment in time? On December 31st, I had $5,000 in cash. Very relevant information, but it's not for a year. It's not going up and down. It's just saying, how much do you have at that moment? So that's why we date the statements as we did. And again, the statements looked at in a vacuum, just looking at statements individually, you don't get as much information as you do if you look at them one year compared to the next or comparing our company to a competitor that's where you start to glean a lot more information as i mentioned she made twenty seven twenty thousand seven hundred dollars that's sherry shuttles made twenty thousand seven hundred dollars is that a good year or a bad year we have no idea if we could compare to our biggest competitor or our main competitor maybe we'd have a better idea if we could compare to how we did last year we might be able to say oh this was a good year or a bad year looked at on its own doesn't mean much it's important to know how to prepare it, but when you're actually analyzing, you do want to analyze multiple years and comparing to competitors or industry averages. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for our video series. Uh, lots more problems like this exist uh, on our website, accountingworkbook.com, and please have a run through any and all of the problems. They all have video walkthroughs. I hope this has been helpful for you. Take care and stay tuned for the next video.